Is Bleach fallen off, or has the peak just begun? Bleach is a 2001 manga written and illustrated by the legendary mangaka Tite Kubo and serialized under Weekly Shonen Jump until 2016, when the manga came to a conclusion after 686 chapters and 74 volumes. The series had gained quite a large following, quickly too, which prompted TV Tokyo to begin aiding Studio Period in adapting the manga into an anime on October 5th, 2004, after the adaptation had finished being animated on March 27th, 2012 with the conclusion of the Lost Substitute Shinigami arc, this marked the end of conversations surrounding Bleach for quite some time, as the anime had come to an end with no real plan of continuing the adaptation, as it seemingly ended four years before the manga had reached its conclusion. This meant that fans of the anime were missing out on an entire final arc of the series, the Thousand Year Blood War arc, spanning over 200 chapters and containing the conclusion of the series as well as the characters that we all know and love. On December 18th, 2021, the Viz Media YouTube channel had published a video titled Official Jump Festa Trailer Bleach Thousand Year Blood War, which gave us confirmation that after going 10 whole years without any new anime content from Bleach, we were eating fucking good. We finally got news that Studio Period was going to be adapting the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and it was set to be released on October 11th, 2022. So, with Core 1 and Core 2 already having been animated, Core 3 in the works and set to release later this year, and with positive feedback from all the fans who've been waiting for these moments for over 10 years, the anime seems to be making some sort of revolutionary comeback. Although, the manga had concluded 8 years ago, causing an uproar of fans to claim Bleach as the king of shonen and one of the best manga of all time. This seemed like the peak of the series in all fairness. So, this all poses the question, has Bleach fallen off or has the peak just begun? Well, I think it's best answered by going over the rise and fall of Bleach. On March 27th, 2012, when the final anime episode of Bleach had been released, with no episodes following it, fans were left to wonder what the fuck was happening. Their beloved shonen series packed its bags and went off to get some milk, gone without a trace. The anime wasn't postponed, it was cancelled, and while the other anime rising to heights alongside Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece, Bleach was left in the dust and fans were forced to read the manga to see how their series had concluded. Back then, long-running anime were the norm, but Studio Periot was being hit with low viewer rates and with every episode episode release, the views continued to drop. I mean, the anime was filled with god-awful fillers half the time. It's no surprise why fans got bored, when for months the only content they were getting was from the fucking Bount arc. The Bount arc. I would not wish a single episode of this shit on my worst enemy. Anyways, the lack of attention from the viewers, and really the lack of care from them, wasn't really a shock as to why the anime was cancelled. The Soul Society arc was really the first peak of the Bleach series, introducing the viewers to an insanely layered and complex cast of characters and bad bitches. The arc spanned from episodes 21 through 63, containing some insane fights and had moments that really jump-started the series. Ichigo vs Ikaku, Izuru, Tetsuzaemon, Shuhei, and Rangiku all stumbled upon the bloody corpse of Captain Sosuke Aizen, Ichigo vs Renji, Ichigo vs Kenpachi, Uryu vs Mayuri, Toshiro vs Gen, blah blah blah, and of course many more. And obviously, the climax of the entire arc, the reveal that Daddy Aizen faked his own death and came back fully looked max after hours of edging. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. This was the peak of the series at this point, an insane amount of really entertaining fights leading up to the reveal of the main antagonist, in which the reveal was raw as fuck. This was the point that Bleach fans really fell in love with the series and couldn't wait for more. Well, for most fans, that was really it for Bleach. The series didn't make a drastic decline or anything of the sort to drive the viewers away from continuing the series. It was simply that after the Soul Society arc, it took quite some time for the series to ramp up to that previous level of greatness and what was regarded as the section of the series that really made people fall in love with it. As the anime kept releasing episodes, there was a significant decline in quality and dare I say actual fucking episodes. The more episodes they released, the quicker they caught up to the manga, and became practically forced into animating filler episodes that clearly nobody enjoyed. Although in Japan, Bleach wasn't as popular as its big three counterparts, whereas in America and other countries, fans were really crushed and concerned with the direction of the series and the future of their beloved anime. As the slower pace of real episodes that were adapted from the manga were released, fans just began to care less and less about the anime, and it really reflected onto the production quality, or lack thereof, 
as there was a clear decline after the Soul Society. The fight between Ichigo and Aizen during episodes 308 and 309 were really the final saving grace of the anime at the time for most fans. It was the last real moment of charm and quality that the series had after being packed with useless fillers and poor production quality. But aside from the fans of the series becoming sick and tired of the yo-yo effect from peak episodes and arcs to fillers and the godforsaken Bount arc, Studio Periot really couldn't do anything about it. The anime was releasing at the same time that the manga was, and as more episodes released, the closer and closer they got to catching up with the manga. Therefore, the need for countless fillers in order to maintain its status as a weekly releasing anime. The anime had ended in 2012, just as the manga had reached the commencement of its final arc. Thousand Year Blood War. The anime then ended, with no real explanation as to why. With the progressively poor views, lack of fans staying loyal, and sticking it out through the filler episodes and decline in quality, the anime really had nothing left to do but to take a step back and figure out another approach. So with the Bleach manga coming to a conclusion in 2016, then spurred conversation about a potential return to adaptation from the series, as fans had already been waiting four years and began to wonder what was next. And they waited, and waited, and waited, and waited, and waited until December 2021, where Viz Media had confirmed that Bleach would be returning for the Thousand Year Blood War arc in the following year. And then it happened. On October 11th, 2022, Bleach had returned with the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Fans were in an uproar. I have never seen more anime fans unite for the release of a season after it's been so long, let alone 10 years after it's been deemed as cancelled. Motherfuckers were rabid. I have never seen more horny bastards in my life than I did on the release day of TYBW. Although, I don't really blame you guys. Anyways, the series was releasing on a seasonal basis and was releasing weekly in Coors, with Coors 1 ending on December 26th. 7th, 2022. Kur 1, titled Blood Warfare, had adapted chapters 480 until 542, covering the introduction of a hidden empire of Quincy's led by Yuwa as they waged war against the Gote 13. This time around, Studio Periat had all the material they needed in order to animate the remainder of the series. They were finally not battling with themselves on what to release with their long history of fillers and what at the time was being so close to the serialization of the manga, they were finally able to take their time and adapt the series with justice. And boy, they did. Kur 1 of TYBW had me geeked out. Bleach is arguably my favorite manga of all time, so seeing one of my favorite arcs adapted with modern animation was like a dream come true, and not only for me, but for the countless of Bleach fans that waited 10 years to see their series be animated once more. Core 1 had ended with one of the greatest moments in this arc, in which Ichigo accepted Zangetsu as a part of him through the Blade Is Me sequence. Such a fantastic and cathartic sequence to read and albeit not better than the manga in my opinion, but with the animation being on point and the music adding a much more nostalgic level with number 1, I think it was done perfectly. With the start of Core 2, fans were wondering how much Studio Periot was going to cover for this segment, as Core 1 had covered 13 episodes and just about 62 chapters. They decided to keep the same flow with Core 2, as it was also 13 episodes and covered around 70 chapters. Core 2, titled The Separation Arc, adapted chapters 542 to 609, and off the rip, I thought Core 2 was visually better than Core 1, as episode 19 was arguably one of the most stunning episodes I have ever seen in any anime, but overall I think Core 1 takes the edge. Studio Periot only had 6 months to adapt Core 2, and 10 months to adapt Core 1. So with four extra months, they were obviously able to be more detailed and concise with certain events, but that's not to say that Core 2 was bad because by all means, it was fantastic. I do think certain moments were definitely better in the manga, such as episode 20 with Gremi vs Kenpachi, simply because Kubo cooked and Periot just wasn't able to keep up with that level of caliber. There were a few times where I wish the anime had done some different things regarding choice of OST and added content or a lack thereof, but besides that, I genuinely have nothing but positive things to say about Core 2. So, with Core 1 and 2 having finished, Studio Periot is currently working on adapting Core 3, which I think will span from chapter 609 until I'd say around 650 to 655. I think that's a safe bet, as it definitely covers a lot of important information, but still leaves a lot to be animated within the fourth core, but not too much that they might end up rushing or leaving out key and notable details. I think that thus far, Bleach has made a comeback and is most definitely in its prime anime-wise. Fans of the anime maybe 15 years ago would have said that at that point, that was the prime, during the Arankar arc, but after seeing the comeback that the series has made since being cancelled, it really just goes to show how well the series is put together and how strong its staying power is. 
So with that, the Bleach anime, Thousand Year Blood War, is still ongoing and set to release the third core in the spring of this year. Studio Periot thus far has done a sensational job at adapting Tite Kubo's work and has given the Bleach anime a new look and not one painted by fillers and poor reviews, and has also taken past Bleach fans by storm after waiting a decade for their beloved series to return. The anime currently has a 9 out of 10 rating on IMDb, with the most popular episode having a whopping 9.6 rating out of 10. So it's no surprise the series is making a revolutionary comeback and the fans are loving it. I think the series will end in 4 cores in total, and with Core 3 releasing soon this year, and Core 1 and Core 2 having roughly a 6 month spacing difference, Core 4 might release around the end of 2024 or early 2025 by my calculations. Core 4 though, that is where I think fans who are strictly anime only are going to lose their mind. The finale of TYBW has some of the greatest moments in manga history and arguably my favorite conclusion of all time. I just can't wait to see it fully adapted, but regardless of when Studio Periot finishes with the adaptation, it will be a fan favorite favorite and go down in history as one of the greatest redemption arcs of a manga and anime series ever.